Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to make generative grids inside of After Effects. All right, so this is what we're gonna be making this week. It's basically a generative grid, and it uses elements, uh, or tiles in this case, that can be composed of pretty much whatever you want. In this case, everything is set up on a 20 by 20 grid, but it can be whatever you see fitting for your project. So the basic idea is that we have tiles and sources. So each one of these images is made up of multiple tiles, but there is one source driving what actually is seen. They're combined in this comp. As you can see here, I have a bunch of these things called piece. And if we go into that piece comp, you can see nothing. There's absolutely nothing in here. And that's because we're looking at the first tile, which in this case is just a blank tile. These are all driven with master properties in case that wasn't obvious. If we open this up in central graphics, you can see that we have piece, total, source, and tile. Let me undock this thing, get it out of the way for now. That really messed up my whole layout, didn't it? Let's bring that that way and continue. So right now we're looking at source one, which is just a fractal noise. And there's also source two, which is very similar. Source three is our actual logo. And you can see if we run through these tiles, you can see all the different pieces. Now, obviously we're not seeing the whole thing, and that's because we have these other two sliders up here called piece and total. So how this works in this setup is that this comp expects an input of piece and the total. So the total number of pieces that you're gonna to intend to use, which is basically how many levels or posterization or how many different tiles you wanna to use to display the source. So in this case, it's expecting three. If we change this to one, it would show us everything in just this one tile. So you can see all our various tiles just built out little different elements. If I change this to 10, we're gonna get one tenth of the total that we would have. So the basic idea here is that our piece comp will basically take our source and our tiles and composite them together into individual pieces that are basically sections of our image of our final source. And this comp basically is what saves us from having a ton of other different things track matted in the previous comp. So if we look down here, we're alpha matting our tile with our source. And our source has an extract on it and there's an expression on this guy, which is pretty simple. And actually, let me load that up in expression so you guys can see that a little bit better. Hold this over here and bump this guy up into there. So this is a setting for black point. And what we have here is N equal to this comp layer controller, effect piece slider, so the number, and then T for total, this comp layer controller effect total slider. So we're gonna take number minus one, and that's because this is gonna expect a number from one to whatever number you have. But the first number is actually gonna extract starting at the black point of zero. So it's gonna be zero to whatever. So for the black point, we want the first one then to be zero. So n minus one when n is one, will make this whole thing zero. And that's multiplied by 255 divided by the total. So taking 255 and dividing it by the total gives us what size of block for each section of this histogram should be. So then the white point is almost the same thing. We bring that up here. We're not doing n minus one, we're just doing n times 55 divided by t. And then the rest of these things like source is all linked up to the controller. So this slider or this master property is basically the same thing as the one that's on here. Because sources and tiles also have their own master properties. So if we twirl this open again, close that up, and you can see that the source number is passed into source. And the same thing for tile, we're passing in the tile number so that we get the correct tile. So basically each piece of this thing in the main comp can have a different tile or a different source if you wanna go that crazy with it. But we're mostly gonna to try to pass it different tile numbers so that each piece of this histogram basically builds up with a different tile. So it's kinda of like a gradient map like we've done before, but it's a little bit easier to set up once you have this whole thing built. So now you can add a ton of different tiles and there's really no penalty because in the previous way that we did this, you had to have a comp that was as big as each one of your comps added together. Now they just live in this master property setup. So if we go into each one of these things, sources and tiles, they're basically set up the same way. We have a controller on the bottom that just gets the number for the source or the tile, depending on which comp you're in. And then each one of these things has an expression on opacity. And if we bring that up, you can see here, it's if this comp dot layer controller dot effect source slider equals equals index. Don't just make this a single equals. The value of opacity will be 100, else it'll be zero. Once you're done putting that on one of these things, you just do copy expression only and you can add it to the rest of them. So any new source you add is super simple once this whole thing is set up. 
And again, we have a master property on this thing for the source. Same thing in tiles. It's basically tiles instead of source. Those two are set up exactly the same. So whenever you build a new tile, which all of these kind of just look like this, in this case, this one's blank. Tile two here has all of these things in it. Note this grid is actually a guide layer. That's just so we can see that you're matched up with certain things. But if we click out of here and we go through this tiles comp and we go down to our controller, you can kind of go through this and see what each one of the grid pieces looks like. We just have a bunch of different dots, some diagonal lines, squares, X's, all your kind of FUI goodness kind of junk, a bunch of code that's overlaid on top of itself. So I'm not going to go through how all of these tiles are all built. They're using various techniques. I'll try to link what I can down below. Um, check out our glitch playlist a lot. There's a lot of good stuff in there. But if you really want to deep dive on this thing, the project file will be available on our website for a dollar. This is a bunch of text that's randomly changed and they're all aligned to that grid. And then there's a bunch of adjustment layers above these that change certain ones red. You probably do that with a selector. I just didn't do it that way. This is actually just an adjustment layer box that changes the fill. And each one of them is 20 by 20 as well. And they pick a random position on the grid, which is similar to other stuff we've done before. And then in 15, it's basically the same thing. It's just not alphanumeric. This is just a block dissolve that has the block width set to the same as our columns. So in this case, it's 96 by, I think, like 2 or something like that. And 17 is the same thing. It's just uh, transitioned a little bit more. So just to demonstrate how easy it is to add things to this, we're going to go over here. And I have this drone footage. I haven't even tried this out, so I don't know if it'll look like crap or not. But we're going to make a new comp. I'm going to resize this thing so it actually matches the dimensions that we are working with here. 1920, 1080. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see what that looks like. I'm going to call this uh, source, I think, of 6. And if we go into our sources comp over here, we can drag that guy right down there. Hit T. And I've already copied that expression, and I haven't done anything else, so we're going to paste. So if you want to just verify what it looks like, we can go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's that. What I've been doing to most of these things is adding a mosaic on top. So we'll do that. We'll click this to add an adjustment layer, mosaic, and I'm doing 96 by 54. So they're all 20 pixels. Hit sharp. You can change this to grayscale or add whatever different things to it if you wanted to, but we're just going to leave it that way. And now we'll go in here and we'll change our controller to source number six. And there we go. That's what that looks like with that. And in here I have this thing set to use this tile start. Basically each one of these things has an expression on it for tile. And if we open up Expressionist over here and pop that in there, you can see we're taking that tile start number and then we're adding the master property for piece number. Each one of these things has, unfortunately, hard-coded, basically, a piece number. So this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, however many I have. So it just takes that number and adds it to that start thing. So that if we're using tile start of nine, for example, this one's piece one, so we're actually going to start with ten. So if we go back to eight, we'll technically actually start with nine. But you can go through all of these things, tile start, and kind of see what different looks you can make out of this. It works interestingly enough, depending on how you set up your stuff. If they, if they actually follow a gradient, then it'll look more realistic. And if you just did a lot of random stuff at the end like I did, you'll just get random stuff at the end. And if you just do random stuff, which is basically what I did for the second half of the tiles, you'll just get something kind of random. Which actually works uh, pretty well when we change this thing to something like the fifth one that's in here. It's a little bit more intensive because that one actually has to calculate some stuff. Go back to my other layout here. Go back to that. I don't know why it changes me from one to the other, but there we go. And this thing has some of the lines that we did last week, and they basically draw through, and they kind of blur, so they do different things. You can see that it's got text coming in there. We change the tile start a little later. Maybe more interesting. Maybe a little less late. Let's go back the other way. That was kind of cool. So if you play around with each one of these different things, you can get different looks depending on what you put in the background. For our logo, basically we have a, a fractal noise thing on top of it that basically changes the color of it so that it's not all the same piece. Here's one of the ones that I rendered basically out of that. It takes a little bit to render sometimes. You can see kind of the thing that you can get by messing around with this. So you can make some pretty interesting stuff out of it depending on the source material and the tiles that you build. All right, and that's pretty much it. I know it's a complicated setup to get going, but once you have it built, it's really easy to add things to it and make it super customizable. So I hope you guys go and experiment with it. 
Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.